Hello everybody, my name is Elliot Kimmel and this is my video tutorial for the climate change strand in grade 10 science. This is on the albedo effect and if you're a student of mine at Central, I'd ask that you would uh, take notes as you watch the video, write down uh, the stuff that you're going to see that I highlight and the odd diagram that I'll also indicate for you to draw as well. Okay, so we're going to do the albedo effect now. So what is the albedo effect? Well, the reflection of solar radiation, such as heat, and that's the main thing that we're interested in here, the reflection of solar radiation, i.e. heat, by a surface is called the albedo effect. Ice and snow have a high albedo because they reflect a lot of radiation. So we say ice and snow have a high albedo. That means they give a high albedo effect because they reflect a lot of the radiation. And in this diagram here, you can see that the sun is shining down on the earth and there is radiant energy absorbed here, but energy can also be reflected. And you can see off the water here, there is some reflection. Off the land, there is some reflection as well. And that's important for keeping the planet cool. However, when the surface has snow or ice, there is a lot more reflection. In other words, there is more albedo. There's a higher albedo effect, which is the reflection of solar radiation, i.e. heat, um, from the surface. Now, there are different materials that have different albedos or different surfaces with different albedos. So, for example, water has an albedo of about 8%. So it reflects about 8%. That's its number. Forest, 10%. Sand and desert, 25%. Clouds, 40 to 70%, depending on the type of cloud and depending on how much cloud there is. And then snow and ice, which is the next one, ice and snow, about 85%. So you can see that there's quite a bit of albedo a lot of reflection with ice and snow so that's very important having ice and snow is very important to the planet now let's have a look at what happens when there is a decrease in temperature on on the earth and how that's going to affect the ice and snow and the albedo because there is something called a feedback loop that we're going to have to consider. So here we have an image here with a bunch of ice and a bunch of water and snow, and let's see. Now, I'd like you to draw this diagram in your notes. This is a cycle, a feedback cycle, and what you see is, and I'll give you this in a note in just a moment, that when there is a drop in temperature in the Earth, this causes the production of more ice, and that makes sense, right? When it's colder, more ice is going to form. We can see that in our winters here or up north near the North Pole. Obviously, a drop in temperature leads to more ice formed. Well, when there is more ice, there is an increased reflection of solar radiation. And again, we're going to read this as heat. More ice leads to increased reflection of the radiation. So less heat is being trapped on the Earth, more is being reflected out. And that is going to cause the temperature to drop even more, right? When there's more reflection, causes the temperature to be even colder. Well, that's going to lead to even more ice being formed. And that's going to cause more reflection. And that's going to go back here to lower the temperature, etc., etc. So this is called a feedback loop where one thing is causing the next, which increases the next, which increases the next, and it goes round and round. So let's write this down in sentences. If Earth's temperature drops, more ice forms, as I just explained. This ice reflects more of the sun's radiation. In other words, there is an increased albedo effect, which is the reflection of the radiation, and Earth's temperature decreases even more. And this causes more ice to form the drop in temperature even more causes more ice to form, which reflects more radiation and so on. So, I mean, unchecked, 
if there wasn't a balance and the temperature were to drop, we'd get more ice formed, more reflection. That would cause more drop in temperature, more ice, and it would go round and round until we would all freeze to death. But obviously that doesn't happen. There's a balance. But this is the general effect of decreased temperature. Now let's look at the reverse scenario, the effect of increased temperature. So I'm going to show you another feedback cycle down here that I'd like you to draw. And it's just the reverse of the last one. If there is an increase in temperature, for whatever reason, this is going to cause more ice to melt. And again, imagine we're talking about the polar ice caps. All right. Temperature goes up, more ice melts. The less ice that we have now, the less radiation or reflection of radiation there's going to be. In other words, there is a decrease in the albedo effect. There is less ice, so less reflection of the radiation, so it stays on the earth. Therefore, that will increase the temperature even more. It's stuck here. It can't escape. The increase in temperature will cause more ice to melt, which will again decrease the radiation, the reflection of the radiation. I said that twice wrong now. And that's going to keep going around in a cycle. This is called a positive feedback loop. This increases this, which increases this, which increases this, etc., etc. So let's have a look at the points to write about this. But if Earth's temperature increases, more ice melts. There is less ice to reflect radiation. This is a decreased albedo effect. So less radiation is reflected and more is absorbed, meaning more is absorbed by the earth, by the atmosphere, and the temperature increases even more. Because we have less ice to reflect it, the radiation stays, heats up the earth even more, and that's going to cause even more ice to melt and the temperature increases again and so on around and around in a cycle and earth just continually heats up all right and you can see in this image over here we've got a house that was above water at one point it's now almost completely submerged because as the ice melts sea level goes up right there's got to be somewhere for that that water to go and uh it goes into the seas and the lakes and stuff so this dog can't go into the house anymore he's stuck on the snowbank there so this is the effect of increased temperature if unchecked this is the cycle that can happen so you have learned in the past and in this course you either have learned or will be learning about the greenhouse effect all right earth being like a greenhouse trapping in the heat like a greenhouse for plants they need a nice warm human environment but when that happens on the earth there's there's a relationship between the greenhouse effect and the albedo effect normally there's going to be a balance in the Earth's global climate system so that the temperature stays relatively constant. So as you saw in the past, let me try to draw this here, right? Here's Earth, and here's the sun shining down, right? And the energy is coming in, hitting the Earth, the solar energy. And some of that is going to be absorbed and some of it is going to be reflected or transmitted or radiated back into space. And there's a balance between the incoming solar radiation or heat, if you like, and the outgoing. And so the, so the temperature stays relatively constant. But what if something is messed up here? What if the energy can come in, but it can't get out? right it just keeps building up and building up in here and that's the greenhouse effect all right so what could cause that various gases pollution etc 
So, if the greenhouse appears to be trapping heat due to those greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane, etc., if they're trapping heat, that can cause more ice to melt. More ice is melting because of the trapping of heat. That's going to reduce the albedo effect because you have less ice to reflect the heat out. It reduces the albedo effect. The ice that's melting leads to water, which is going to increase the sea level and lead to potentially lead to global warming. All right, because the heat can't get out. It's being trapped. You have less albedo to reflect it out and we get global warming. Now these are two just very old diagrams, but they're lot, there's lots of them in your textbook or over the internet. And what you're seeing here is the difference in the average temperature over time, or if we just look at the temperature itself here, we can see over a span of time, a change in temperature from maybe around 13.5 average degrees up to close to 14 and a half. So this is an increase in temperature, global average temperature. And this, of course, is the benefit of science, which, um, you know, takes measurements over time and plots these measurements you know, and, and therefore we can see these trends in nature and arrive at some scientific conclusions and maybe some solutions. The increase in global average temperature, of course, leads to the melting of the polar ice caps and the water needs somewhere to go. This leads us to an increase in the average sea level going up. So that's obviously one of the problems because we've seen what happens when uh, tsunamis hit, uh, hit the shoreline, the damage that water can do, okay, powerful water. And of course, when people's houses get flooded, it's incredible financial damage. Um, there are health effects, people drown. And this is just one of the issues is the actual raising of the sea level. You've also got the effects of changes of temperature on crops or animals or insects and you know from your studying of ecology how one organism affects another organism which affects another organism which affects us let's say all right so even if this small organism over here is affected by global warming that can have a very detrimental effect on all of these other organisms, including us. All right, so that's my brief introduction to the albedo effect. Thanks for watching.